Hello everybody. Thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity. As we know, myopia is a very uh, important topic today because we are encountering myopic children in our uh, clinics day in and day out. And the data, uh, data says by 2050, nearly half of the global population will be myopic. And this is how it is go, uh, going. Um, but the baseline refractive and ocular component measures of the largest trial, the COMET trial, shows that they had taken the children from six, uh, six years to 12 years, and the uh, myopia component was from 1.25 to 6. So uh, in another uh, Japanese school children, we find the similar data, 95 children from 1.25 to 6 diopter uh, spherical equivalent and uh, they were six to 12 years. So uh, my study is different because I have compared the visual characteristics of the early onset myopia and late onset myopia, taking the six years age as a cutoff. So 60 eyes of 60 children presenting with uh, less than six years of age with myopia were studied for myopic error, astigmatic error, best corrected visual acuity at onset, and were compared with gender and ethnic ethnically matched children having more than one diopter myopia at more than six years of age. So we did a cycloplegic refraction, retinal evaluation, squint workup, contrast sensitivity, confrontation field, stereopsis, and most of, uh, not all patients could undergo all the tests because of the age limitation. So the mean myopic uh, error in the early onset group had a minus 7.27 with a confidence interval of 95%. Uh, when compared to the late onset who had a mean myopic error of minus 1.93. Similarly, mean astigmatic error in the early onset group was minus 2.48, which was significantly higher from the late onset group, which had only negligible 0.27. The uh, initial visual acuity, best corrected visual acuity was 6 by 36 in patients where in late onset, if we see this graph, it shows very uh, beautifully that the late onset myopia patients had a very good visual acuity the, and the early onset had lower. It, is, uh, it can be explained by critical age uh, of myopia. The next is, uh, if you see the amblyopia and stereopsis, the stereopsis was abnormal in the early onset group. The amblyopia was very much prevalent and the squint was also very prevalent in these groups. We had a, a significant number of isotropes with myop in our study. So how was our subset different? Because the early onset was in first three to five years. The uh, lowest age group was 2.5 years. They had associated contrast sensitivity loss, amblyopia, mild to moderate degrees, strabismus with significant number having isotropia. Tessellated fundus was only found in one sixth of the cases and prematurity was not a significant history on, uh, in all patients. So what was the drawback? It was a pilot study as best to frame a research question. The, it had an observation bias and referral bias because it was a hospital-based study. I would conclude that the early onset myopia in children is a less recognized refractive entity distinct from a late onset myopia with high myopic and astigmatic errors, poorer visual acuity requiring aggressive visual therapy. Thank you. Good that you finished before time. Uh, you, you are, uh, in your study, you are telling that uh, poor visual acuity is uh, more seen in patients with early onset myopia. Yes, sir. actually we have taken two subsets. One is less than six years having myopia as a presenting feature and uh, more than six years of age. So the patients who are coming below six years of age, they had significant uh, loss of vision. Yeah, and initially the they were uh, amblyopic. Most of them were 636, 624, 680. Uh, whereas in the uh, uh, late age group, because their myopia is setting in late, as we know, the school myopia, as the uh, definition comes, after six years or seven years, once the child starts reading, the myopia starts developing. So uh, these patients usually don't have such high amblyopia. So this uh, findings were before you give the correction or? The findings were at the moment when we give the correction and see how, what the refract. Uh, vision is. After so that we start amblyopia therapy. So once the therapy is started, we have a follow-up uh, data, which I have not presented. And you have told that isotropia is more common in... Uh, no, ma'am, not common, but it is a significant number because we have all this uh, preset ideas that uh, if the different things. 
So what we commonly see is the myopia is more commonly associated with exotropia. So you have uh -huh. not taken into consideration of exotropia. You have only mentioned about the isotropia. No, did you, I did you look for the exotropia? Uh, exotrope and isotrope both I have mentioned. I have made a pie chart also. Okay. So there is a significant number of exotropes, but there were my, uh, exotropes also. But that again, is this seen. is one point which is deviating from the usual information. Uh -huh. Second is, uh, uh, when uh, we, uh, uh, in uh, normal, we think that uh, late presenters, they have poor vision and corrected refractive either for longer period of time, they cause poor vision. But you are telling it is just the reverse, right? No, sir. It is uh, the onset of myopia that I am saying. If the myopia has come very early, how do you know that at a particular point of observation, whether the onset was earlier or later? Uh, because you are seeing the patient at a particular point of time. Sir, that is the observation bias I am talking about. But what I have done is I have taken the baseline. Because many a times the patient is coming after two or three years of follow-up in different <laughs> clinics. So I have taken those data into So what okay. is the number, total number of patients you have seen? Sir, 60 early onset, 60 late onset. Yeah. Need to follow. Yeah, I and think again it's a small number to conclude, yeah. and it's also there is a referral bias because yes. you are in a tertiary center. Yes. So definitely we have to take into consideration. Thank you. Thank you.